Today we're going to learn how to install the hot end for a single hot end with a cooling fan. So I'm going to walk you through the process that's involved in doing this on the Big Tree Tech Octopus. And this is version 1.1, but it also applies to the Octopus Pro. So a couple things we need to know is where our power source is going to be, where our hot end is going to connect, and where we're going to use our fan. So in order to do this, we need to go over to the desktop for a moment. And on the desktop, you can see that we have HE0, HE1, HE2, and HE3. These are hot end 0, hot end 1, hot end 2, and hot end 3. So this is our first hot end over here. Then down in here, we have our fans that we have to figure out. So you can see that there's written really tiny here. Let me zoom in so you can see. PA8. That is the first fan that we're working with, being fan zero. The other thing that we need to recognize is that the bed power is located over in here. So there's a bed in and a bed out power. Also, we have the board power right here, which will run our hot ends. So in order to set this up, we first have to make the connections. So let's go back over to the workbench. And on the workbench, you can see that we have the power source located under here. So we're going to hook that up real quick. Now, notice how I've actually marked the screws so I know what's what. So I'm going to slide this in and I'm going to tighten this down. Then I'm going to do the same for our ground for our power supply. Now the power supply is off at the moment. So there's our power. Let's make sure everything's nice and taut. Let's lock that down. Next, what we need to do is actually hook up our thermistor to our hot end. And I've got the hot end actually upside down as you can tell over in here. But that's just so you can see it better. So as you can see, I have the actual cartridge power right here for it. So in order to hook this up, I need to actually connect it over in here. And to do that, we have to put it in the blocks. So I'm gonna unscrew to loosen these up. Okay, those are nice and loose. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to slide in these connectors in just a second right here. So these are ferruled and they're locked on. So the ferrule connections actually are a safe way to connect. So I'm going to slide that in and I'm going to tighten this down again. You'll be able to see as soon as I get my hand out of the way. So that's nice and in there. So let's do the other one right here and then tighten this down as well. There we go. So those are both in there nice and snug. Now we have to hook up the thermistors. So I can't remember exactly where the thermistors are for the actual detection of the actual temperature. So what we're gonna do is go back over to the desktop for a second, and we're gonna examine this real quick. So what we're looking for are TH0, so it's probably going to be a two pin connector. So we need to find it in here. So we have TB, which is thermal bed. Then we have T0, which is thermal and it's port zero. So let's go back over and see if we can find that real quick. So it's probably this one right here. So this will be able to detect temperature inside the actual hot end. Next, we need to connect the fan. In order to do that, we're gonna to go to fan zero, which is located over in here, and I'm using a 24 volt fan. So as you can tell, the actual jumper is set to 24 volts, as well as the jumper over here. So everything is 24 volts at the moment. Now in previous tutorials, which I'll put a link up to in the upper right hand corner, you'll be able to understand how to vary the power supply for fans if you have multiple types of different voltages. 
but for now we're not going to worry about that. What I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to take the SD card so we can set this up to load and put it in here and then place it in the computer so you may hear a beep in a second. Okay, so let's go back over to the desktop. I'm going to reduce this back to normal size. And I'm going to go over to VS Code. Now I've already downloaded and extracted the Marlin firmware and the most current version that I'm working with today is 2.1 that just came out. So I'm going to click on the Explorer, then open folder then downloads, then Marlin 2.1, Marlin 2.1, and select folder. Inside of here, we need to find our board. So what I like to do is I like to go to the Marlin folder, then the source folder, then the core folder, then we're gonna look for boards.h. Inside here, we're gonna search on Octopus, so Control F, then octopus and that'll bring us to the section where we can select our board type. So I'm going to highlight the section that we need, right click and I'm going to copy that. Now notice the pro is here as well. The process is exactly the same just the pinouts may vary. So let's minimize core and source in a second but let's verify that the chipset that we're working with is stm32 f 446 ze and what i'm talking about for the mcu i'll show you on the desktop real quick on the desktop what i'm actually pointing to or talking about is the mcu over here that has that writing on it being stm32 etc so let's go back over to the desktop. We're going to minimize the source for a moment. Then we're going to go to configuration.h. We're going to search on, with the control F, motherboard. And we're going to highlight where it says ramps and paste our version. Now I'm going to change the actual serial port to negative one. Now this also can vary because down here we could use this instead but I like to use this for the board. This one can be used for the TFT display, but we're not talking about that right now. I just wanted to explain it yet again. So we're gonna search on thermal settings and down in here, we have to actually configure our hot end. Now we're only using a single extruder. So in this case, there's already a default setting and that default setting corresponds to a thermistor type. The one that I like to use is number eight in my case. So I'm gonna change this to an eight. So that's all we have to do to configure the actual thermistor. This will help us tell temperature. Now there are other settings down in here for thermal runaway. Do not change those ever. That is a safety feature of Marlin firmware. But now we need to set up the actual automatic cooling fan. So we're going to over to go over to configuration dot or excuse me configuration underscore advanced and we're going to search on cooling if I can spell it correctly. And I still didn't spell it correctly. There we go. And there's going to be several things about cooling. What we're looking for is cooling for the hot end. So it's the fan part cooling. This is going to be for our hot end. Down in here, there are several things that you can set. So the extruder fan temperature. When this reaches 50 degrees Celsius, the fan will go on. I'm going to roll this down to 35 Celsius because I think ambient temperature is 27 Celsius or 23. I don't remember exactly, but that's just so it clicks on at the right time. Then 
what we're going to have to do is, let's see, you have other stuff for chambers. We're not going to worry about that right now. We're actually going to worry about the auto pin that we're connected to being our first fan for our first extruder. So that's why it says E0. So what we need to do is figure out what that is. So we're going to click over here and we can see that this is fan zero and down in here if I zoom back in you can see that it's PA8 but we'd like to confirm that so we're gonna go back over to BS code we're gonna go to source then we're gonna go to pins and we know what our chipset is because it's the STM 32 F4 so we're gonna click on that and down in here you can see the octopus and there's a common folder. If you click on this, you can search on that fan pin, but it should come up. So let's search on fan zero and see if we can find it. So we have our fans down in here, hopefully. If I can type it correctly, pardon me. So you can see that it's PA8. So that's the pin we're looking for and we just confirmed it with our actual diagram down in here. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over to the advanced configuration tab. We're going to change the negative one by backspacing over it and pasting in our pin. That will configure that for us. So we can also adjust the fan speed. So if we want this to go on automatically, I'm going to say 200 for the moment, just so you can see the difference. 255 might be okay for you. So this will automatically turn on when the temperature is reached at 35 degrees Celsius. So let's set this up to build. So in order to do that, we have to actually minimize some of this so we can see better. So I'm going to minimize the actual pins file. I'm then going to go over to platformio.ini and we have to set up our default environment. This is set for the ramps. We need to change it to our chipset. So we're going to minimize source. We're going to go over to the INI folder. We're then going to find our chipset again, which is STM32F4.ini. And we're going to do a search with the control F on Octopus. And as you can see right here, it's found our board. Keep in mind the chipset can vary between boards. So they may have changed it. So I'm gonna use this one because I know that's what this board is for. So I'm gonna copy that. I'm gonna close out of the INI, go back to the platform platformio.ini and paste it right here. Now what I'm gonna do is a clean. And the reason that I do this is because if you're using a default file, in this case it has the Mega 2560 in it, I'm gonna clean that out. Once that's clean, I'm gonna click the check down here for build. And if you don't have this located in your actual setup, it means you're missing platform IO for your plugin. So this may take a moment to actually build. If there's any errors, try building a second time because sometimes things build out of order. If you see something red in here, that means you have an error, like in this case. So I have an error that's generated. Let's see what we've got here. You cannot use E0 as your fan pin. So that means we've got to change the position. So it's a good thing we came across this error. I'll show you what's going on. This might be a reserve pin. So let's go back over to the workbench. We're gonna pluck this out and move it over to the next one over. So now we're in the second fan port, so fan one. And then we have to realign the actual fans. So let's go over to the web browser. We'll see what we got. We got PE5, I think, but let's confirm it. So we'll go over to source, core, then we'll look for, whoop, not core, pardon me, pins. And then we'll go to our chipset, which is down in here for common. 
and we'll use the next one over which is PE5 so we'll copy that then we'll go back over to configuration advanced we'll paste it right here and then we'll try and rebuild hopefully this error will go away we might have to move to the third fan being fan 2 but I'm pretty sure this will work but it's been a while since I've worked on this so we'll give it a second to build let me minimize some of these folders and remember if you do see red always fix the very first error that you see in here that I just showed you so we're watching right here to see that we're gonna see firmware.elf or firmware.bin the elf is actually an object file it's used for debugging and uh, that's a subject beyond the scope of these tutorials so um, I won't be covering it in the near future so it took 40 seconds to build we can see that it's in here as firmware.bin so we'll right click and we'll say reveal in file explorer inside file explorer we have no file on here for firmware.bin currently so we're gonna right click and we're gonna send this to the E drive note if this loads correctly this will change to all capital letters firmware.cur. So let's go over to the desktop and give that a try. So I'm gonna pop out the drive. I'm gonna place the drive in here. And then I'm gonna plug this in. Power will be supplied via USB at the moment. So it's flashing. If we hear a ding or a beep like just now, that means we're connected to the computer. So now we can test it. So the first thing that we want to do is actually plug it in. So I'm going to take the power supply pin, or excuse me, the power supply power, and plug it in over here. So now the board should start up. So now we're going to go over to Pronerface in just a moment. So on Pronerface, pardon me we're going to connect but we don't know what our connection is currently so we're gonna to have to go over to our desktop and check it so I'm gonna type let's see device manager and I'll bring this over so you can see it on the other screen so down in here we have ports com port 1 is not the one we're using but it's com port 21 so let's see if it's listed here it is not so we'll highlight this backspace over the one put 21 and then connect to the printer so now you can see the printer is now online so what we're going to do next is we actually have to heat up the print head in order to have the fan work correctly so I'm gonna weight some of this down pardon my for my arm moving across there so watch the fan and I'll show you how this works over in here. So what we want to do is we want to heat it, but we're going to do a user defined one here. So I'm going to say that it is 50 degrees Celsius. And I'm going to set it to turn it on. Now watch the fan. And as you can see, the temperature is already spiked over here. And it's going to show us basically right here what the temperature is as it rises so we hit 37 the fan went on so that's how you can make the fan actually automatically cool your hot end so I'm gonna turn this off and at this moment I want to take a moment to thank my patrons and people on PayPal for making donations so I could make these tutorials for you and buy equipment and I will place a thank you note at the end of this video. So everyone take care, be safe, and I'll catch up with you later.